So I'm not gonna lie, I didn't want to make a video about this topic, but then a ton of viewers asked me to respond, and my editor said he wanted to see the response as well. I personally felt that it was so dumb that it wasn't worth my time. But alas, I'm a man of the people and you guys have spoken. This new trend of hating on the 90s is really just them masking their bias for their favorite players. Speaking of masks, that's why today's video is brought to you by Manta Sleep. Manta Sleep crafts the world's finest sleep masks and functional sleep accessories. They're dedicated to enhancing sleep quality so you can seize every opportunity, unlocking your full potential with better sleep and regular naps. Today, I'm showing you the Manta Cool Mask, the world's comfiest blackout cooling eye mask. I personally love this mask because its cool and soft texture relaxes me and soothes the pain away of my chronic headaches. Its cool eye cups are designed to soothe eyes and sinuses with evenly distributed cooling, providing relief to puffy or irritated eyes, dark under eye circles, headaches, or sinus pressure. Manta Sleep has masks for every type of sleeper, ensuring personalized comfort for optimal sleep. And here's the cherry on top. Order now and use code Johnny Arnett for an exclusive 10% off your order. Many of you probably aren't aware of this massive trend that started recently on TikTok. I personally don't use TikTok because I value the few brain cells that I already have. But this trend caught on so much that it's now showing up on social media and here on YouTube. Young fans are saying two things. One, quote, we're done with the 90s, implying that the product was so bad that they're not even acknowledging it anymore. And two, Michael Jordan didn't have a left hand. Yeah, you heard me correctly on that one. Usually, this we're done with the 90s trend involves posting some lowlights of that era. This includes bad passes, sloppy handles, poor shot selection, and so on. Most of what I've seen is just plain and simple bad defense. And to that I say, okay, so what? Basketball is an imperfect sport. I don't care who your favorite player is. I promise you that they've had moments where they looked like an amateur. Everyone has highlights and lowlights. There will always be great defense and terrible defense within the league. How it's presented can influence people, but ultimately a simple highlight or lowlight reel doesn't tell you the whole story. Even a bench warming role player like Brian Scalabrini has highlight compilations on YouTube. And if you were not a basketball fan and you watched those highlight compilations without proper context, you would think he belongs in the GOAT conversation. Listen, if you're done with the 90s simply because of the lackluster basketball you saw in some agenda-driven lowlights, then let me present to you the evolved defense and athleticism of the modern game. Please enjoy.
So, I guess we're done with a modern game too. A lot of people are, and they tell me all the time in the comments. Listen, the point of this video isn't to slander the modern league out of revenge, but rather it's to make the point that every era has its highs and lows. Although I fully recognize that 90s players don't generally shoot the basketball as well from the perimeter, I also recognize that modern players are not as good in the post as they were in the 90s. Every era has its points of emphasis, and naturally, as a result, it also has its own strengths and weaknesses. Plain and simple, this whole trend is just a case of confirmation bias. Every player and era has its not-so-glamorous moments. But certain fans choose to hyper-focus on those moments, because in their minds, the best way to validate their favorite players is to invalidate the competition. LeBron beats out Jordan if MJ played in a weak era. KD is better than Bird if Larry was a plumber who played against plumbers. And Steph Curry is a GOAT candidate if you eliminate everyone who played before the year 2000. So yeah. If you're done with the 90s based on some lowlights, well then you might as well be done with the game of basketball. Now as far as Jordan not having a left hand, Jordan had one of the greatest layup packages ever, right-handed or left-handed. For me, he's right there with Kyrie Irving for the best layup package of all time. Don't just take my word for it though, let's check the tape. Here's MJ finishing with his left over Akeem Olajuwon of all people. Here's MJ with a series of left-handed reverse layups. Here's Jordan driving left, dribbling left, finishing left. More driving left, dribbling left, finishing left. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and, again. and about a thousand more times after that. Hell, one of Michael Jordan's most iconic plays was him finishing with his left hand. By the way, this was Game 2 of the 1991 NBA Finals, and this was his 13th straight field goal without a miss, and 3 of those 13 shots were with his left. There's literally entire compilation videos online of MJ going to work with his left. So what's the next stupid thing TikTok is going to say? That MJ couldn't jump? Y'all have a nice day.